Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and as Wolverine sneaks his way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe's upcoming Phase 4 plans, our Infinity Saga rewatch uncovered some serious clues pointing at the existence of Logan and his adamantium weapons of mass destruction already hidden in plain sight. Evidence beyond that Weapon X Project Exodus detail I've already talked about at length, though that does factor into my research here and most of my Zoom conversations that oddly lose their connection shortly thereafter. New details discovered regarding Wakanda's mysterious history, unanswered questions of Cap's shield in Avengers Endgame, and the trail of all of these rare metals all point to one truth. The X-Men are already here, and the proof is an old Cap's pudding. Let's follow the vibranium and see how deep this Mount Bashanga rabbit hole goes. Recently, I explored the mystery of Mjolnir from Infinity War and Endgame to how it's returning in Thor 4, which I guess I'll round up on Guy's Comet campaign here. Thor 4, more Thor! But equally perplexing is the magic weapon on the other side of that boom equation, the shield of Captain America. Now, Tony Stark returned it to Steve Rogers after he said in Civil War, that frees me my daddy's and I'm taking it home. But then in the Endgame final battle, Thanos shattered the hell out of it. So the last we saw that broken boy, he was strapped to Cap's arm in the Battle of Earth until Thanos javelined the quantum tunnel and knocked everyone off their feet. And that broken shield got lost somewhere in the rubble and was never seen again. It was not on Cap's arm when he went back to return on the Infinity Stones. So how did old Cap get a new unbroken shield to hand off to Sam? Well, it depends on how you interpret the movie's poorly defined and internally debated time travel logic. The screenwriters would have you believe that same timeline Cap dug the shield out of ice and left his unfrozen caveman other self still down there. I side with the directors, who say Cap lived in an alternate timeline and came back to this timeline. That makes sense to me because Cap would have come from some future year of that alternate timeline when advancements in quantum navigation had been made so that he'd be able to move horizontally across across the multiverse instead of vertically through time. Ah, oh, crap, I'm losing you. I'm just saying Old Cap came from a timeline in which his shield could have been reforged from a different material other than the vibranium the old model was made out of. We got a clue that the shield Sam carries has different properties from the footage we've seen from the Falcon and Winter Soldier series on Disney+. Plus. Sam wedges that shield in a tree. That's odd, because, you know, when Cap discussed it around in Winter Soldier and Civil War, it would tend to ricochet off surfaces, like if it could bounce off human flesh, why is it now bunioning through tree bark? I believe it is because this is a new shield composed not out of vibranium, but the official substance of Captain America's shield in the comics that Marvel now has the licensing rights to use, Proto Adamantium. So what's the difference? Well, vibranium is the naturally mined Wakandan mineral that came to Earth via the meteorite. Adamantium is the man-made alloy of vibranium and steel. It's stronger and more rigid than vibranium. And of of adamantium, there are several types, but primary adamantium is what Weapon X used to form Wolverine's skeleton. But primary adamantium was an attempt to recreate the miracle alloy proto-adamantium used only once in history, Captain America's shield. That is why Wolverine's claws cannot cut through Cap's shield, though they can pierce pure vibranium. Now, the MCU established that Cap's shield throughout the Infinity Saga was composed of vibranium, an extremely rare quantity of vibranium outside Wakanda, along with the amounts that Ulysses' claw stole and sold to Ultron. But as we rewatch the Infinity Saga, new details were discovered about this history of claw and Wakanda that could point to how adamantium could also be scattered across this planet. Look, talking about movies like this makes me appreciate the filmmaking process. And now is a better time than ever to take class to learn more about this craft. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit any schedule. Maybe you're feeling extra anxious right now. Skillshare lets you explore classes that may help you express what you're feeling through creative self-discovery. Taking a creative writing or painting or Photoshop class can help you break up the routine of a day spent indoors. They have classes and topics new Rockstars fans will enjoy like animation, film, video, music production. A class I want to check out is Teach Yourself to Draw Anything, a step-by-step -step process taught by Hayden Nayube. The class focuses on building a routine of drawing so you can improve your skills over time. And my skills need some work. Work. I mean, I can't really read or write, so I have to use stick figures to communicate with my coworkers, and they can't understand those either. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are 
are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. So when we rewatched Age of Ultron, something interesting appeared in Claw's file. Claw's great grandfather was a Belgian warlord who was killed by T'Chaka after trying to annex Wakanda in the late 19th century. And I pointed out how this was likely a nod to the infamous real world Belgian King Leopold II, who committed horrible war crimes in Central Africa, right near where the fictional Wakanda is located. Now, also in recent weeks, some unconfirmed reports have leaked that Wolverine may join the MCU in a plot involving a combat nano suit from Shuri and Antarctic Vibranium. Antarctic Vibranium is also known as anti-metal. It's found in the prehistoric Savage Lands, hidden in Antarctica. And many are speculating that Antarctic Vibranium, or anti-metal, will be the MCU's origin story for adamantium. Which, yes, are different things in the comics, but you know the MCU, they tend to simplify things. So here's what I think happened. When that Vibranium meteorite crashed to Wakanda in ancient times, parts of it broke up and scattered across the globe. That might have been how Howard Stark got Vibranium from other parts of the African continent continent without having to cross the borders of Wakanda specifically. I believe that one chunk of that vibranium crashed into Antarctica. And then over the millennia, it was frozen over by Antarctic ice, just nesting there, right next to the, the thing spaceship. And I believe Wakanda's involvement with that Belgian war criminal in Central Africa in the late 1800s led to that secret nation expanding outward to a colony atop another rich mineral deposit near the South Pole, a secondary outpost hidden in the final unclaimed continental frontier on Earth. Earth, now that the heart of Africa was being exposed by Western colonialism. They wanted a secondary refuge hidden in the ice atop the secondary frozen Mount Bashanga with a different kind of metal. Now, while I do think a trip to a prehistoric savage land might be a bit much for Black Panther 2, that's kind of a phase six kind of thing, there are other signs we could visit this Wakandan Antarctica colony with rumors that Namor the Submariner will be revealed as a ruler of a rival hidden kingdom under the sea. And Marvel Atlantis' origin is rooted near Antarctica. Those undersea earthquakes Okoye told Natasha not to worry about? Perhaps it was a territorial war between these two kingdoms in the South Atlantic. Other rumors point to Black Panther 2 revealing Aurora Monroe Storm, who is the daughter of a tribal princess of Kenya, who could perhaps be a key ally to T'Challa and Wakanda during this war. But the mineral at the heart of that conflict, Antarctic Vibranium, may be a steel alloy that the MCU will call adamantium. The same substance I think is being used by Project Exodus. Tap the Oracle grid. I need some stuff out of storage. Give me everything from projects Pegasus, Exodus, and Goliath. AKA Shield's Weapon X to coat the skeleton using nanotech of a certain regenerative mutant named James Howlett to become the Wolverine. A history presented in Black Panther 2, but hinted at, I believe, much earlier in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Because again, the cap shield now used by Falcon is not the same one we've seen before. It's from a different time, most likely a different reality sometime in the future, you know, to allow old Cap to bend in game zone rules of quantum entanglement, in which Steve Rogers in that alternate reality not only knew about Wakanda's existence from 1940s onward, but would be able to help them in their coming conflicts like invaders like Claw in the early 90s. Such favors would likely be rewarded with a shield forged from a new alloy called Proto Adamantium. And that is a new shield handed off to Sam that ends up wedged in a tree. And that, my friends, is how in Phase 4 Marvel could retcon its own history to introduce Adamantium, Weapon X, Wolverine, Storm, Namor, and the Captain America shield finally corrected to be composed of its official substance, Proto Adamantium. Comment down below with your thoughts on this theory. And for more theory discussion, join our official Discord server, which you can join by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Follow me on Instagram at EA Voss. Follow new rockstars. Subscribe for breakdowns of everything you love and shout out to my goddaughter Ellie. Uncle Eric, sorry, won't be able to visit you in Florida this summer. I mean, I mean, I guess I could try to fly solo. Whoa! Boom, you looking for this? <laughs>